Hello everyone. So today we'll speak about co-op, Qt of course, IoT in general, and the story of a, of a Gecko too. So let's get started. So very little information first. So my name is Adriano Arval, of course, that, that was written, so you may already know. I'm uh, working on embedded software at Witekio. And um, what we did, and this is a first for us, is that we are starting contributing to a new module to Qt uh, to support the co-op protocol that we will be talking about, which may, if we are lucky, be integrated into uh, Qt 5.11 and has very strong interaction with the Qt for automation part. So, uh, as you may have seen, Qt is um, also moving in that direction. So, automation and all the different protocols around that uh, to ease you guys uh, de developing application for automation for M2M and for IoT. And this goes right into this package. And so, first we'll see how uh, Coab quickly compares to MQTT, actually, to take one uh, famous example. Uh, the basic use case of uh, Coab and another a little less basic use case for that with also some code, even though that may change in the future. All right, so um, quickly how QAP um, stands regarding other protocol and namely MQTT. So MQTT is one famous name that we talk about when we uh, talk about IoT. That's like one of the big words that we use. Uh, MQTT and uh, AMQP, which is very close to that. They both uh, support feature which is, which is publish subscribe, which is like uh, you want to receive notification when something happens. So you subscribe to a topic and you will receive notification. And um, this kind of protocol will require a broker, which is basically a kind of server that will retransmit all the different messages to the different uh, software elements. And then we have, um, it's IoT, so there is internet in the world. We have the, the, the web, the standard web protocol, so the HTTP and the web socket. And these are quite old now, right? Um, but you have a lot of tooling around that. You have a lot of existing servers, etc. So it's very easy to set up. Limitation: it's it's quite heavy for for IoT, and you have no, for example, public subscribe mechanism that is built in. So is there a middle ground? And one answer to that is the Coap protocol. So Coap is completely based on HTTP. So if you already know HTTP, you will be just that will seem very clear to you. It's actually using UDP protocol compared to HTTP. And the goal is to make it very accessible for the lower device, so it has a very low footprint. It was made for that in terms of memory uh, when you want to develop a library, and also in terms of bandwidth usage. And um, for the disc, it has two big features. One, one is the discovery, so the capacity to detect other devices that use the Coap protocol and to detect the, the features, the attribute that they support. And the second one is the observe feature and observe is like a published subscribe but a little less in depth than, than what you have with MQTT. So a few facts very quickly if we compare them. So you have MQTT, HTTP and Coap. Um, and the first difference is, is the, the, the architecture in which they work. So MQTT is a many-to-many -many connection and it requires a broker while the other two uh, use a simple client server architecture. So you don't need an additional stuff. You don't just need a server and a client. On the second line, you have the protocol, and you see that Coap is the only one to use the UDP protocol, and this is to, for, to minimize the bandwidth usage, uh, simply. Uh, for the security, you will have TLS in both sides, and for Coap, you will have DTLS, which is the version used for UDP protocol. And regarding feature, well, Publish with subscribe we've seen, discovery observe for co-op. Regarding the footprint, um, as MQTT is using TCP and requires an open connection, uh, co-op is actually lighter than MQTT. So if you need to, to, to build something really uh, low power, MQTT will definitely be the solution because it was really designed with that in mind. And for the flexibility, I find it's a bit more difficult to, I would say, customize the MQTT protocol regarding Coap because Coap is actually a very simple action. So you have get, post, etc., and you can easily put what you want behind that. All right, so let's start with this famous lizard. So that's the story of 
uh, gecko, which is named uh, Todd. We'll say Todd is a good name. And Todd likes it hot, right? It's a lizard, cold-blooded, so it needs to have a little hot environment. So um, we have this one. He, come, he couldn't come to the, the conference, by the way. Sorry for that. Um, what we have here is that there is a, temp there is a, a thermometer in his little cage, and uh, he's, he has this little uh, light so uh, uh, to heat him. And what we would like, of course, is to automatize to, to make that uh, automatic to heat the space near him to maintain a constant temperature. So use, the use case is quite basic, right? So we have a very simple chip here. A uh, bit bigger here. We'll come come back to that later. And if we architecture that using MQTT, well, you will require this broker here, this additional server that we put in that case in the cloud, just because we can, right? That's the goal of it. Um, and we want, of course, a, a mobile app or a web app, so you can definitely do that. You have an additional uh, application, and you will communicate either directly with your MQT message broker or indirectly with an HTTP server. So basically, this, this is how you would architecture that for MQTT. And um, the pro of that is that MQTT is actually very good for events. So if the base of your system is to communicate events, like the change of the temperature, it will be very good for that. And it's also very well suited for that environment. So you can have your broker in the cloud and the rest anywhere else, and because it maintains a connection and use TCP, it will definitely work. And on the con size, well, it's still a bit complex because you, you need this piece of software and it will keep an open connection and use TCP socket. So it's a bit heavier than what you may want. All right, and if we switch, switch to co-op, simple, I would say, almost dumb architecture. So we have our very simple processor here and uh, another device. We could use, for example, Wi-Fi. And in that case, your device here would be a co-op server, right? Because the, the principle of this server is to provide information. So this co-op server will provide you the temperature, for example, and maybe the firmware version that you have on it. And here we would have a co-op client to connect to it. And if we need a mobile application, in that case, we need a heavy client because we need to integrate the co-op library into an existing application. You cannot just use uh, HTTP for that. So we have our custom mobile application, and we could definitely communicate with both devices also using Wi-Fi. And because this is a point-to-point -point connection, it will be quite straightforward, maybe except the setup, the initial setup uh, connection to the, the Wi-Fi network. So in that case, we are, for example, in one home, in your home. Definitely not over in the internet. And so the pros of this solution is, like you see, even though it, maybe it's a bit messy, but it's a very simple client-server architecture. You don't need an additional piece of software. And it's a RESTful service, which means it's very good at um, retrieving states and at just making requests and getting answer. So you can very easily say, OK, return me your temperature, and you will, you will receive that. And you can also, for example, say to this device here, uh, set the, the desired temperature to 30 degrees, and that will also be fine. You use, for example, a POST request, like in HTTP, and you would have that working. And on the con side, uh, the main one is really the, 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 the NAT, the challenge with the NAT, because as it uses UDP, um, you will not be able, for example, to reach out from the internet back to your home using UDP protocol because there is no active connection. So that's one element that, that you should know about. And it's not as good for events as MQTT. We'll see that there is the observe for that, but if your system is mainly based on events that uh, go in your system, that's not necessarily the best solution. So a few details now. Uh, Co-op means actually constrained application protocol. Right, nice. Um, and it uses a subset which is called uh, constrained REST environment. And uh, this is where we define here all the, the different operations like we have in HTTP, so the get, put, post, etc. Um, and so it's really a REST full architecture. If you're used to using get, put, etc. Et uh, method, this is really, uh, th this will be exactly the same for you. The default port is this one. I will not pronounce it. 
Uh, it supports this uh, common method. So get is usually to get an information. Post will be uh, to um, create a new element most of the time or to edit it, put to make a modification and delete to delete an information. And for the payload, you can actually put mostly what you want, but these are the common formats. So JSON is per perfectly fine, and so it will be easy to convert to, uh, to a web format. Uh, XML, of course, plain text, or CBOR, which is a form of JSON which is compressed, so it's even better when you have to deal with low uh, energy power and um, making the most of the, the bandwidth <coughs> usage. And two uh, additional features that I listed here are the confirmable message, so this is really a specific case, but it's, um, it allows you to receive an acknowledgement even when the answer is pending. So the, answer, the server could be waiting for an answer from another piece of software or another device, and meanwhile say you, okay, I received your answer. And in any case, you will receive an acknowledgement. And a blocks-wise transfer, which is a way to avoid packet uh, fragmentation, um, to avoid the conversational state. The, the goal is to keep it as simple as possible. That's the, the, the main idea behind, behind Coop. And one example of the current API we have uh, is this one. So it's very simple. It's actually uh, very similar to the Q Network Access Manager that you should already all know, I think. <laughs> That's quite common, right? So you create a Q Coop client, and from that you will have the usual finished error signals, etc. And you can, for example, make a GET request to a specific IP and retrieve, in that case, the temperature. You could also make a PUT request, and with PUT and POST request, you can attach data to that. So in, in that case, we would, for example, uh, add this. So in this example, we, we change the, the pulling rate of, of our sensor to 10, 10 something, 10 carats, for example. So that's basically the idea, so very simple to use. So one of the two big specificities of Coop, which is the discovery, and to me this is the most important one. So um, when you're dealing with M2M, usually you don't know the, the target, the real IP of your device. You just know you will have two devices using Coop, and happen what's happened. If, it's, uh, if, if it is using DHCP, you, do, you really don't know the IP of your device. So with the discovery, uh, feature, you can actually see what's, what, what are the devices present on the network. And you have two different things. So the first one is if you know the IP by chance or not. Uh, you can directly target this uh, URL, which is that well-known core, and it will return all the attributes that the server is willing to show. Uh, that you can access. So in that case, for example, the temperature, average temperature, and uh, the binary of the firmware or the version, for example. So that's some example from, from for your small thermometer. And if you really don't know, you can actually issue that um, discovery in multicast. So this is the default address for Coop. And all the devices that subscribe to, to this multicast address will answer. So you will know all the devices present on the network and all their attributes that you can use. And this is really one of the big advantage of, of Coop. And on top of that, you have one nice feature, which is actually the filtering of these ones. So let's say uh, you want to find the, the attribute, which is the temperature. You don't necessarily know the path. You can make a research in, in that way. So you have different way to, to write it. Uh, to look for a resource, which is of type temperature. And from all these, it will return only the one which is tagged as RT, so resource type, temperature. I didn't wrote here all the details, but you can imagine that just every attribute can have one or more resource type and one or more uh, interface. And this is, can be used for searching and filtering all the results that you have. Another example here with the firmware, for example, and we have all the information regarding the firmware. So you really don't, know to, don't need to know exactly the different device that you are dealing with. And the code looks like that. So in that case, there is a, a few improvements that we will make, but the basic usage is still simple. So when you have your co-op object, you make just, you do discover. And uh, probably soon you will just, if you want to discover anything on the network, network, you put just no arguments and it will return you all the results of all the devices present on the network. And then when the discovery is finished, you will have access to the, all the list 
of the resource like you can ex uh, expect. So really simple to use and you don't need to know the path, you just need to make your search and manage the data how you want. So that's the goal of it. It's, it's really an open protocol. So you can have different components that really don't know each other if you know that they will be um, accessible with that name, for example, uh, you just have to filter on the, right, on the nice right resource name, sorry, and that will work. So going back to this small architecture, we can make a bit better because the previous one was not really a real example. It was Wi-Fi everywhere. Uh, we can make something different. We can use a six low pan uh, type of network like Zigbee, for example, which is in that case a lot better suited for uh, low power consumption. So here we can have really a small device and we use Wi-Fi only to have a web application. So this is much better for you because here you don't need a heavy client. You can have just a web page that is served from your little system that you developed here. And the communication here, because it is Zigbee, um, will let you know you will will let you use here a very small component, maybe even running on battery, uh, because it use protocol like that are exactly made for that. And we can actually do this conversion because Coap was made from HTTP. So the, the, the link between Coap and HTTP is actually quite easy. You send a request from here to your device, you get the answer which is in the same format as the return code for HTTP, and if it's a GET, you're just doing a GET request and you return what you, what you have. So I would add to the list of pro and cons simply this easy HTTP map mapping and caching. And the caching part is very good if you want, for example, to make requests only uh, every five minutes. And maybe that will be the device that will let you know that the temperature changed, and not this one here that will make directly the request. So we can go even lower in the, the, the power usage of your device. And so this missing component uh, to have this five minute, for example, ping is the observe functionality. So with the observe, we can have this element that say, I want to observe your temperature and just tell me, tell me when it changed. And you can have your very small thermometer just wake up every five minutes and just send a simple quad packet to that server. And in that case, you have really a device that, is, that will run low power. So that's the observe. And to use, it's actually very simple. It's like a get, except there is an additional parameter that say observe. Um, so regarding the code, for example, you will observe that URL and you will say observe instead of get, and you will receive notification each time the message is received on the network. It can be canceled by the user or by the server, and if you want to manually cancel an observe, you have actually a simple method. Okay, and to finish quickly with the HTTP co-op caching and proxy, so we've seen that Coap URLs are actually resources, no, sorry, the other way. Resources are exposed as URLs, that's why it's easy to map. Uh, all the re written codes of HTTP are more or less the same that you will use for Coap. You can create your custom written codes, but except for that, that will be the custom one. So 200 if it's okay, and 404 it's if it's a non-existing resource, for example. You can use exactly the same method. The payload is easily convertible or just usable as is. You can just forward it. Um, and you can definitely do some ag uh, application agnostic proxying because there is no knowledge inside that. It just, you return the payload and that's it. And a few examples of usage are, for example, uh, to implement your own security on top of Coap, so TLS, OAT, etc., cetera, um, to provide an HTTPS REST API, so for example, to have a web app instead of a heavy client for your smartphone application, um, to aggregate various sources, to cache the result, or uh, to provide a web front. Again, like for the smartphone, you have a simple web server, and you have a web front that you use to display all the information. And that's it. So how to get it? So currently, it's still in review, and it's planned to be added for 5.11 if we are all good. It's public, uh, publicly available sorry, on the Qt repositories 
And if uh, you guys are, in, are interested, uh, you can come back to me and I can provide you uh, the link. The um, license is still, uh, the decision for the license is still pending. We'll see <laughs> what happens uh, regarding that. Um, it's definitely open to review remarks or feature requests. Uh, we are completely open for that uh, to discuss and also is the, the Qt company. And a few examples of tools if you need to make tests, for example, for yourself. You have coab.me, which is a nice uh, test client server already online. Californium, which is a heavy client made uh, with Java. And you have a package for Node.js, for example, also available. Here is the reference. And here is two example other libraries, two other uh, libraries that you can use meanwhile if you don't want to use the Qt version. And this is the, 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 the one which is the, the most used, the libcoap. So that's it. So the few things to remember is that Coop is well suited for local networks and not if you have to do like communication with the internet. So that's where it's, it's the best. And for state also, so getting information or sending a request and not necessarily for events, even though it is definitely supported. Um, it has this big discovery feature, which is very interesting when you don't know what you are dealing with. And it is also definitely compatible with HTTP. So if you want to know more, just Come to see us, we have a booth. And uh, we're also looking for engineers because there is a lot of work, but that's a totally different subject. Thank you very much. <laughs>Yes. Why, why, why wouldn't you use it? You mean, why, why wouldn't you use MQTT instead of co -op? Just, uh, I mean, uh, why, why not use co Observe to be informed about No, that, 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 is, that is definitely what you can do. What I try to mention here is that it is um, less strong uh, than MQTT. So it is definitely supported, but if all your architecture is based on events, then maybe co-op is not the best solution. But like you said, the observe mode uh, will work in that way. Uh, the server will send you events uh, when it wants, uh, when there is a change or when it's just uh, deemed reasonable to. And uh, just a quick question. If the server cancels the reservation, is that, is client not That's a good question. Actually, I have to check about that. I'm Quite sure you should, we should receive a notification on the co-op. I'm not sure we uh, forward it to the cute part, uh, but that would be definitely important too. So I will add it to, to our to-do list. So the question, if, if there is a mechanism to, uh, to retain the message, uh, like for MQTT when another uh, client uh, connects. Uh, no, no, there is not. However, it, the, 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 the mechanism is completely different because you don't need necessarily to retain uh, because you can just tell the server, get me that information. And um, that's the big difference with MQTT. When you want to say, get me that information, that's a really not that easy. In that case, you can just call the, the resource that you want directly and make a get or, or post request. And basically, there is no real need for retention and, and sending back the message in that case. So that's all good. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone.